Today, I'll be explaining how you can create this new film grain filter in Affinity Photo using macros. This technique is a great way to add new features to Affinity Photo. Here's the starting image I'll be using and I have it open in the Photo Persona. I recently shot this image in Northumberland and I've already converted it to a black and white photo. The only thing I haven't done is add the film grain effect. Because it's an effect I want to add to this and other photos, I'll be recording my processing steps as a macro. To use the macro feature in Affinity Photo, I first need to open the Macro Studio panel because it isn't visible in my workspace. I can do this from the Window menu by clicking the Macro option. We then see the Macro panel appear in the left studio area of the interface. The Macro recorder is quite simple to use. To begin recording, we just click this red disk. The square icon to the right of this is then enabled and we can click this then to stop the recording. After recording a macro, the steps then appear in the panel where we can click the play button to apply them to any other image. Let's click the record button and I'll talk you through the steps to create the film grain filter effect. First, I want you to notice that I'm not rushing to create this effect. That's because the macro recorder only records the steps as I perform them. It ignores the time between the steps allowing you to concentrate on getting them right. You might also find that it's helpful to write your processing steps down before you try to record the macro. The first step in adding the film grain effect to the image is to deselect any layers in the studio panel. I can do this by clicking the select menu and then the deselect layers option. This ensures that the layer that I'm going to add for the film grain in the next step is going to be positioned as the top layer in the image. I can then add a new empty pixel layer which we'll use to create the film grain. I'll also change the name of this to be film grain so that we know what it is. The next step is to fill this layer with a mid-tone grey colour. We can easily do this using the fill command in the edit menu. This displays the fill dialog where we can click the colour swatch to choose the colour we want to use. I'll select the HSL controls here and set the L value to 50%. This produces a mid-tone grey, which I can then apply to the pixel layer, turning the image grey. We now need to set the blend mode for the layer to overlay, which makes the grey layer vanish. This happens because mid-tone grey is what we call the neutral colour for the overlay blend mode, meaning that it doesn't have any effect on it. Now that we've prepared the film grain layer, we need to add some noise to it using the noise filter. You'll find this in the filter menu under the noise submenu. Let's start with the intensity slider at 100%. The type of noise that we want to apply now is Gaussian noise, and we'll keep the monochrome option ticked. We can then apply the noise to the filter grain layer. Now the effect doesn't look much like film grain at this point, as the noise is much too small and too harsh. What we need is a way to magnify the noise on the layer, and one which we can control. One way to do this is by using the distort filters, which you'll find in the filter menu. The particular filter that we want to use is called Equations. This will allow us to enter a formula to magnify the size of the noise to make it look more like film grain. The formula we'll be using is X divided by open brackets A times 7 plus 1 close brackets, which we'll enter into the X field. And then we'll do the same for the Y field, but this time it's Y divided by A times 7 plus 1. This formula is being used to create new values for the x and y coordinates of the layer, which causes it to become magnified. The a in the formula is actually referring to the value of the slider a in the filter. You can now see that the noise is much larger and looks more like film grain. But the filter also allows us to control the grain size using the parameter a slider. I'll set this to around a middle value to use as a starting point, but you'll see later how you can change it. The image is now looking much better, but I also want to be able to set the film grain layer's opacity. 
let's initially use an opacity of 80% to include it in the finish filter. Those are now all the steps that I want to use in this macro, so let's stop the recording. The next step is that we need to test our new macro before doing anything else. To do that, I'll delete the layer we've just created while recording the macro. We can then just click the play button in the macro panel, and if everything works correctly, we should now see the new film grain layer appear in the layers panel. Now that we have our macro recorded to add the film grain effect, let's look at how to produce the dialogue containing the controls. If you look at the macro panel, you'll see that some of the steps in the macro have a cog icon to the right. This is indicating that these steps have controls that we could actually include in our dialogue. The ones that we'll be using are noise, blend mode, equations, and opacity. If I click the cog next to the noise step, you can see that it opens a small dialogue showing the available controls. We can then click the eye icon next to the ones that we want to include in our dialogue. When you select one of these, you can then also change the control name. Let's call this one Grain Intensity. Then, when I apply the change, it closes the dialogue. The other control we also want to use from the noise filter is the Gaussian Noise option. I'll call this Gaussian Grain. Next, we'll include the Blend Mode. Then, in the Equation step, we want to use the Parameter A control. This is where we can also set a default value for this filter, so let's use something like 0.3. And we'll also rename this as Grain Size. Then finally, let's include the Opacity slider. Now if we hadn't set the Opacity to 80% earlier when recording the macro, the step wouldn't appear and we wouldn't be able to see this control. With that done, we're ready to run the macro again. This time we see a dialogue where we can use the various controls that we've just chosen. We now have the control we need over the film grain settings, and we can use this dialog to add a film grain layer to any image. Once everything's working as expected, we should add this to our library so that we can use it in the future. To do this, first open the library panel if it isn't visible by clicking the window menu and then the library option. If you want to create a new category to help organize your macros, click the hamburger menu at the top. I'll call this new category Robin's Film Macros. We then see it appear at the bottom of the Libraries panel. Now, go back to the Macro panel and click the icon to add the macro to the library. That's where we can select the new category that we've just created from the drop down. And then we'll enter the name of the new macro as Basic Film Grain Layer. After saving, we then see the new macro added in the library. Now, go back to the macro panel, and we'll clear the macro because we don't need it anymore. If in future we want to use this macro, we just go to the library panel and double-click the macro. We can use this technique to create all kinds of new and bespoke filters with custom dialogues. And if you like the film grain macro but don't want to record your own, I've put a copy of it on my website for you to download. I'll include the link in the YouTube video description. All that I ask in return is that you try out my free newsletter and book. Now, there's one final thing that we can do to this film grain layer. By using the Blend Ranges control, we can control how the grain is applied to different tones in the image. To understand how the Blend Ranges control works, watch this video next. Thanks for watching today and I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe when you download the macro, and I'll see you soon for another video.